Okay, welcome back. We're gonna go ahead and do the rest of the part placement for this design. Again, I have just turned on some DFA rules, so you might see a little bit different behavior if you didn't set up DFA rules in your design. But don't worry, you can still do a full part placement, leveraging the built-in functionality of the tool without having to turn on DFA rules. Okay. So I personally like to start with larger components. So we're gonna go ahead and place the connectors as well as the main IC. And then going from there, we're going to use the schematic as a reference and sort of group different parts together and place them around our parts. When I'm working on placement, I personally turn things like object snapping and alignment guides off, unless I specifically need to align something next to another part. We'll talk a little bit about some of the other options for alignment as we get farther into the placement. Now, one thing I wanna mention also is if you look at our status, our components are still showing as unplaced, even though they're on the canvas. And that's just because they need to be within the board outline or the design outline for it to qualify as placed. So let's go ahead and get started here. Again, I'm using the move command to select a component and place it within the board outline. Now, when I pick up a component and I wanna rotate it, I simply can press the R hotkey on my keyboard, or once it's placed, I can also, while it's highlighted and selected, I can also change its rotation value with this little drop down, or type in a value manually in the text field. Now, I actually want this component to hang out a little bit over the board. Now we're gonna place this connector here. For this design, all components are actually going to be on the top side of the board. If for some reason you want to flip it to the bottom of the board, it's very easy to do so. Simply while your component is selected, you can select this drop down and choose top or bottom. Or while you're moving it, you can also press the M hotkey and that will mirror it to the bottom side of the board. Likewise, there is a little icon button that you can press in the properties window as well. Now, as we're working on placement, you might start to think that these rat's nests are getting kind of in the way, and it's actually very easy to turn them off if you prefer to do that during your placement. I actually personally keep them on for most of the time just because it helps me organize how I need to rotate my parts and so on. If you want to turn them off, under visibility, there is this section called nets, and then there's an option here for all connections that you can choose to show or hide. Likewise, if, for example, you just want to turn off your power nets, you can highlight them, do a right click and select hide connections, and that might clean things up a little bit. For now, let's just go ahead and hide them all. So now that we have these main components placed, I'm just going to turn on the 3D view. To turn on the 3D view, go into visibility, a section called display, and turn on 3D. When you turn on 3D, you get this fourth option here called Component. You can either view the 3D models by their place bound extrusion or by their step model that's defined in the footprint. So this is what we have so far. We're going to place all the other components around here in the next part. Okay, so let's go back to our 2D view. In the schematic, what we can start to do is pick out different functional groups of parts and place them together rather than one at a time. So we had already selected this before. Let's go ahead and select it again. Go back to ORCAD. Now these components, if I go back into my place command, rather than having them lined up together like this, I'm just going to switch to series mode. And this will allow me to place them one by one around here just generally as I figure out exactly where I want them to be placed. And then I'll switch back to my move command. Start to place them around here.
now we can place place these two resistors first. Notice how easy it is to pick out components that you know need to be close together simply by selecting them on the schematic rather than trying to find them within a cluster of components on your PCB. Now, one of the things that you can use while you're placing these components together, just to make sure that they line up perfectly, is if you select two components, on the right side here, you have these different alignment options. So if I need these two resistors to be lined up perfectly side by side, I can use this align left to make sure that they are aligned. Alternatively, I can also in the snapping options, turn on my alignment guides so that while I'm moving these components, I will automatically have them line up together. Now the alignment guides do sort of act like a snapping, so just be sure to remember to turn it on or off depending on how precise you need to be with your placement. We have just a couple more parts to place.
Okay, there we go. We have a basic placement that we can start to probably do some routing on. Now, placements will tend to be fluid in that you'll have to make slight adjustments every once in a while based on how your different routing channels work out, if you can drop vias everywhere you want to, if you can fan out your microprocessor, if you have enough space for everything you need. But in this case, this is starting to look pretty good. One of the things that I like to do, I can see there's a little bow tie there, so I need to move this, make sure it's got enough space. One of the things that I like to do when I finish my initial placement is to turn on all my connections again, just to see if there's a lot of crisscrossing and overlaps. Except I also turn off all the power nets because most of the power nets in a lot of designs will just have a trace connected to a via which goes to a power plane. In our case, we have a four layer design where layers two and three will be power planes. So let's go ahead and select our power nets here. Select hide connection and ground, select hide connection. Now we can start to see a pretty clear picture that our placement is pretty good. Not a ton of overlaps. You can see everything here sort of lines up nicely. Everything here lines up pretty nicely and so on. And this is what we will use to set up some constraints and start our routing. And looking at our design status, we also see that we have zero out of 46 unplaced components. So we are good to move on forward. Let's just take a quick peek at it in 3D. And here we can see that our board is starting to take shape. Hopefully, while following along, you are able to get something similar to this. Don't worry if it's not exactly the same, as not every placement is, is always going to be the same, and that doesn't mean that it's wrong, necessarily. It just means that it's a little different. If you want to continue with your own placement as we go through layout and constraints and, and cleanup, go for it. If you want to use this exact component placement for the future parts of the video, then we will have it available for downloads. But without further ado, I think that is where we're going to wrap up this video. In the next video, we will start to set up some constraints so that we can set some rules for our design, and then we will start the routing. Thanks again, and see you next video.